Kuya Dak, ik ben Bea. Hello again. My name is Bea, one of the pastors of Pinakal Village. Welcome to day 10 of Solergy, 12 Ways of Christmas. It is a common saying at Christmas time that Jesus Christ was born in a manger. So today, as we celebrate Christmas, let us explore the symbol of manger and what it represents this season. I would like to start by asking this question. Have you ever wondered why the Savior of humanity was born in a manger? He was not born in a grand palace or a prestigious hospital. Jesus was born in a meek stable and laid in a manger. Let us read the scriptures. Luke chapter 2 verses 6 to 7. While they were there pertaining to Bethlehem, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. In other translation, it says there was no room for them in the inn. And let's go to verse 16. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Luke is the only writer in the Bible to use the word manger in the New Testament. These passages highlight the manger's role as a makeshift cradle providing a safe and warm place for the newborn king. Manger comes from the Latin word for chew or eat. It refers to a trough where horses and mule and cattle eat. It can also mean as an enclosure for animals. Quoting Warren verse B, Many scholars believe that our Lord was born in a cave where animals were sheltered and not in a wooden shed such as you see in a modern manger scenes. The manger holds a deeper importance. It plays a vital role in the Christmas narrative. It serves as a reminder of the Christian belief that God chose to enter the world, not with splendor but in the most modest of ways. It stands as a witness to the humble origins of Jesus Christ, inviting us to reflect upon the true meaning of Christmas. What is God's message through the manger? The manger's message is humility. The idea of a newborn king being born in a humble manger symbolizes humility. The first bed for the Son of God was not a royal cradle. It was a common corn crib. It is meant to hold scraps to be eaten. The king of kings came humbly, and his first bed was a manger. So the great message of Christmas is that Jesus chose to humble himself. This humility was an indication of the way Jesus would live his life, serving and giving to others without regard for his own needs or desires. Let us read. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 8 from the New Century Version. In your lives, you must think and act like Christ Jesus. Christ himself was like God in everything, but he did not think that being equal with God was something to be used for his own benefit. But he gave up his place with God and made himself nothing. He was born as a man and became like a servant. And when he was living as a man, he humbled himself and was fully obedient to God, even when that caused his death, death on a cross. The Savior's life starts low and ends lower. This is the point of these verses. Though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Starting his life lower than servants in a feeding trough, in a manger. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. This is how the Savior saves. 
this is how the Messiah delivers all the promises. Kaya po, what is the treasure of humility in the story of Christmas? What is the blessing of the manger? Ngayong Pasko, this Christmas, as we think of the manger, let us put this in practice. Humility serves and loves people more than traditions. Let me repeat that. Humility serves and loves people more than traditions. This season, let us build up others and make them feel special. And not just people at home or church. Let us serve people with compassion. Let us love people with kindness. Allow me to quote Mary Scholar. Service motivated by intentional love is what differentiates us. When our service is rooted in love, it is rooted in Jesus. Christ-centered service has the potential to transform both those serving and those being served. Tanong po, have you ever celebrated a holiday named Mimas? Some people observe it every December. For them, the Christ of Christmas has been replaced by a me-centered worldview. If we are not careful, it becomes all about us. Our schedules, our budgets, our meals, our shopping lists, our vacations, even our gifts to enjoy or return. The antidote to this me-first point of view is humility. Practicing humility remedies the tendency to want personal recognition. David Jeremiah said, Christmas is all about us. God loved us, became flesh for us, died to forgive us our sins, and rose to give us everlasting life. Christmas is the celebration of what Jesus did for us. But in return, we should make it all about Him, loving Him, serving Him, praising Him, and emulating His attitude of humility. That's why let us remind ourselves how Jesus demonstrated humility when as a man, He chose servanthood. Luke chapter 22 verse 27 But consider my role among you. I have been with you as a servant. Quoting Eliza Pulliam, sabi po niya, We have a moment-by-moment -moment choice to do a beautiful thing through serving others as unto the King. 1 Peter chapter 5 And all of you, dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, He will lift you up in honor. Christmas is a call to humility. Extend love and serve with compassion to those around you, including the people who doesn't like you. Yes, especially including them. Quoting Scott Souls, Thriving in Christ must therefore be less concerned with chasing platform, power, likes, follows, influencer vibes, and winning, and more focus on getting low. The way up is the way down. We ascend by descending. We become more by making ourselves less. Again, Humility serves and loves people more than traditions. Let us love and serve others today and find peace in the chaos of worldly traditions. In what may be the busiest month of the year, let us continue to marvel at the manger. Look at the manger scene with new eyes. May the manger be more meaningful to you than ever before. Gaze upon the beauty of humility. Let the promises of Christmas fill your heart with hope and joy. Let us pray. 
Lord, once again, we just want to thank you for the message of the manger. Thank you for its blessings. We thank you for the message of humility, O God. Help us to love people with kindness. Help us to serve people with compassion. And Lord, help us to live like Jesus Christ, not just today, not just this Christmas season, but every day. All glory, honor, and praise belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.